everyone to another episode of Seeds of Music, the web's number one resource for independent artists. I'm your host, Kyle Williams, and this is our weekly web show where I bring on music industry professionals and successful independent artists to talk about the ways to build a bigger, stronger fan base and earn more income from music. So real quick announcement, we have an audio-only podcast version of this show on iTunes. Just head over to iTunes and punch in Seeds of Music, Rise Above the Noise, subscribe, and you'll get all the episodes downloaded straight to your mobile device and if you're so inclined please if you like the show support it by leaving a rating and a review this will improve our ranking in itunes giving the show more exposure helping us help more artists and getting you know, bigger more awesome people on to interview as well and as a bonus i'll give you a shout out in the next seeds of music episode just to say thanks so in today's episode i have on the show danica holmes and uh you'll notice in the interview that i actually screwed that up and call her danica and uh actually i do it twice and profusely apologize for that but you know hey we just roll with it we roll with the punches but yes Danica Holmes uh, she is a successful full-time independent artist now that's uh, a musician who is making all of her musical income uh, or excuse me she's making 100% of her income from music and to her her email list is her number one career tool now I know I've mentioned this in past interviews with Joy Ike and I've uh, been talking about it uh, here and there on social media but really what I'm finding is that the common thread between the more successful independent artists is that they understand that their email list is something very, very important and they put focus on that for building fan relationships. And in this interview with uh, Danica, we're going to talk about uh, how she uses it to build fan relationships, but also actually sell music, sell albums. She specifically sold a Christmas album, uh, 1,200 copies of it to an email list of 3,000 people, and it just took a few emails. Pretty awesome, huh? kind of debunks the whole negativity around people don't buy music because in fact here's proof that they actually do so we're gonna talk a little bit about that and also her tips for getting more fan email signups let's jump right in all right danica thanks for coming on to the seeds of music web show thank you for having me (laughs) awesome and you're uh in in nashville correct yeah and you're uh, only been there for a couple years but you're loving it and you're doing a lot of performing and experiencing experiencing your own your own bit of success as an independent artist working on it every day working on it (laughs) working on it but i hope your dog's not distracting you too much that was a that was a pretty (laughs) cool dog that you showed it was like i thought at first that i was like what was that uh that's a poodle face but then it was huge and kind of had the goldish the goldish hair so gold retriever mix we we call her our band mascot because she tours with her oh nice we tour in a Volkswagen Jetta that has 75,000 miles on it, and Fergie, that's her name. Her name's Fergie. Fergie. She has about she has about 75,000 miles on her as well. So oh, nice, she's nice. She's a good little buddy. Do you have any songs about her? <laughs> no. <laughs> no songs about her? You got to work on that. Seriously. Uh, you know, that that's very, I should sit on a porch with an acoustic guitar and write about my dog. That's very Nashville-ish, huh? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I mean, everybody can relate to that. I mean... <laughs> Everybody has like a poodle golden retriever mix, which that's really unique, though. Yeah, that's she's a sweetie. Is your is this an audio interview or this is, is it... video? Video. video. Okay, that's so if you want to I... show the dog, you want to lift her up. She's fifty Sweet, pounds. Here. Oh, here. Fifty pounds. Just let's see. hello. There you go. She is. Yeah. See, I knew that was like a poodle face, but then I was like, that's huge. Yeah. She's huge a dog. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, so, she's kind of she's kind of famous on our social networking sites. Like, oh, does she have her ever, on Twitter? Oh, she doesn't. And I want, I actually want to start an Instagram for her. <laughs> an Instagram. That'd yeah, be really, I, that'd be really great. Cause then you could have, uh, you know, all, all of your fans who, fans of your music, but love your dog. They can uh, yep. have that way of connecting with you and yep. living vicariously through you as a dog owner. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like, cause I, you know, a lot of people, uh, they can't have like 50, 50 pound dogs where they live cause they have the, the limit. So then they mm-hmm. can just subscribe to the Instagram and get their, you know, huge dog fix. I'd be happy to. Okay. All right. We'll put that down. We'll, we'll write that in the show notes at the end. Okay. <laughs> so, so, uh, Danica, how long have you been, uh, performing music? I started seriously. I mean, all off and on my whole life, but really like professionally, I'd say four years, five years max. And so, how many, uh, well, so four or five years just performing, but you've had mm-hmm. like a warm up, 
you know, a time where you were just like building all the basic skills of music and, uh, yeah, yes and no. I mean, I, I went to college to become a teacher and I actually taught for four years before I realized that was not for me at um, all. I always wanted to be in music, but I come from a background of like really realistic people. Oh, super pragmatic. Yes. Yeah. You know, like, it's what's like, your plan B? Yeah. yeah, like stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's funny because, like, because now, like, people I know, they're so, oh, you can always go back and be a teacher. I'm like, no. Nope. That sucks. No. Like, it, it's okay, you know, like, uh, most people have come around to the idea that I'm, that's not happening anymore. But mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. well, you've uh, built so much momentum that, you know, it'd be, like, silly to turn back now, especially, oh, like, right, when you're, because yeah. you're making a full time living with music. How long has that been going on? That's probably been <laughs> about four years, pretty much. Here's the thing. Like, I quit I quit my teaching job, and I was like, mm, okay, well, I'm going to be a musician, and I better figure out how to make money doing this. Oh, uh, so it was like yeah. the sink or swim strategy. Yes, oh, that's yeah. exactly what it was. Like, yeah. you know, like, I, I understand people need to have a day job for survival and Absolutely. responsibilities and stuff, but for me, like, if I would have just – been kind of like doing this on the side and on yeah. the weekend like no way like yeah. I jumped in like I do this 24 7 so there is no like this was my you know like I, I knew like I didn't have a plan b like mm -hmm. this is my life now and mm -hmm. I'm going to make it work mm -hmm. and I work every day I still do to to yeah. make it work so do you think uh music is just well let's say not just music but a music career is just so tough that it just take you have to have an all or nothing mentality. Have you known any successful musicians who are like, yeah, you know, I, uh, you know, did you know electrician electrician work uh, nine to five, and then I did music on the side, and now and then one day I quit, and the career was there, you know, ready to go. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think I've met anyone like that. Now that I think about it, because it, it's scary, you know, like we need money to live, right? So yeah. Um, I had, yeah, no, like there just, there wasn't any option <laughs> in my life. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I can, I, I can see how, I don't know. I mean, like I, I haven't met any artists either who, who didn't have this kind of all or nothing mentality about music where it was like, all right, well, you know, maybe they did work a, work a day job, but they weren't, didn't have the plan B mentality. Like, okay, if this doesn't work, I'll fall back on something else personally i don't think that works but that doesn't mean that there isn't some artist out there that <laughs> you know breaks that rule but um if they do exist maybe they can just email me and we'll talk <laughs> i think that's a good idea yeah yeah so i mean it, so this is a call uh, calling all artists like if you if you've made that work for for uh if you've made that been able to make that work just uh send an email to call.seedsandmusic and you'll blow my mind anyways uh so you i know that uh when we spoke through email uh previously before we set up this interview you had mentioned that your email list you know that your fans uh, subscribe to from your website is your best and most valuable marketing tool or fan building tool i mean i know some people don't like to use the word marketing but let's just say it's just the most valuable career tool for you uh, why exactly is that oh uh, that's my only direct link to my fans there's social networking you know there's twitter and facebook and i yeah. do all of that as well but the email list, I mean, that goes directly to somebody's inbox. Even if they don't open it, like, they still see your name. And mm -hmm. I'm really consistent about doing it. Mm -hmm. Once a month is is my norm. Um, sometimes I do twice a month, though, if there's a lot going on or if it's, like, a new CD or video or something was released or if we're playing a ton of, you know, shows, like, in the summer. Yeah. I'll do two times a month. But, you know, they know it's a, it's a trust thing. They understand they're not going to get spammed. Mm -hmm. um, they know that the emails come straight from me. They know if they hit reply, I'm going to get back to them, which always is like people are like, "Oh my gosh!" I Blown can't away, get like back. what? You this wasn't yes. like a robot. Sentence? Yeah, people are like, like anytime like people reply to me and I reply back, the it it always is like, "Oh my gosh!" 
I can't believe that you actually took the time to email me. And to me, it's like, why wouldn't I? Like, you took the time out of your day to email me. Like, I'm not so all important and almighty that I, I mean, come on. Like, how long does an email take? Like, I'm not telling my life story. Like, to write, thanks for reaching out, like, and sharing your story. I'm glad my music impacted you in that way. Like, that takes 30 seconds. So, to me, it's like, it's duh, you know? Yeah. It just shows how, like, uh, low people's expectations are, you know? You just reply back to email. They're like, holy shit. I mean, I actually called someone on my email list once, and he was like, whoa. <laughs> this feels like, uh, like, he said something that, like, that made me blush, but I didn't really blush. But if I it was the blushing type, I would. He, he's like, yeah, this was like a celebrity phone call. I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not on ABC, but hey, you know, it's, it's uh, not. I mean, that was that was just pre- bottom 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 line. I I don't feel anything like a celebrity at all. But uh, it was just really cool. I think the point was was he was like, holy shit, this this guy called me, and you know, I've been watching his show and been enjoying the mm-hmm. interviews and he took the time to just do a phone call so i mean yeah. so email like just on top of that replying to email had someone who i replied really quick to them like within the day which is really quick um and he replied back and he was just like oh man uh y- the speed of your response just you know shows how you know how genuine you are about your message and i was like man you know that and if you apply that to your, you know, as a musician, I mean, they're going to think, oh, this person cares because they, you know, mm-hmm. they're at their email ready to reply because they're, you know, that's a priority for them. So that's right. really awesome that you're, that you're actually doing that. And I know that, um, was it last Christmas that you put out like a Christmas album and then you sent an email out and, yeah. and you, uh, sold some albums that way. Can you tell us about a little bit about, what you know like why you did that and and how you did it and maybe how much how many albums did you sell sure yeah um i'll start from the beginning and i'll say this quickly but well let's start let's start with like how many how many uh fans did you have on your email list that was about three thousand at the time and uh how many roughly how many albums did you sell we we sold 1200 copies Wow. To that list That's of awesome. 3,000. Um, but a lot, like our big, the big thing that was awesome, we sold the more, the more Christmas EPs you bought, the steeper discount you got. So, I mean, we oh, had okay. some people ordering 100 because they were sending them to every single person. Like we, we made it look like a postcard so you could actually pop a stamp on it and, and stick it through the mail. So, um, you know, people were paying us for our Christmas EPs, and then they were sending them to 100 people who didn't know about us. So oh, was, nice! Yeah, it was it was sort of awesome. So, and then there were the people who just bought the one copy. Yeah, you know. But like, there's something about Christmas music and that season in general. Like, it's the season for giving gifts and sharing, and like everybody's happy and in the Christmassy mood. So, mm-hmm. um, fans have been asking us to do a Christmas EP for you know a couple years now and so our our second kickstarter campaign like we reached our initial funding goal within like five days of the kickstarter launching Mm -hmm. and so we're like okay we need flex goals now so one of the first flex goals was if we reach this amount of money we'll do a christmas ep so that is why we did the christmas ep to begin with okay so it's like you listen to the fans and that was one thing where like you knew they wanted uh, a christmas album Mm-hmm. It also, you know, doesn't hurt that, you know, the Christmas puts people in the mood for, you know, yeah. sending out gifts and whatnot. But, yeah. but the cat, I mean, that was like the, the, I don't know, thinking of a bad analogy, uh, that was like the base for the, the, the reaction, you know, that was like the foundation. And then, but the catalyst was the email list. So you had the 3000 fans on there. How many emails did you send out, uh, before people... That's a good question. Um, okay, I, I mean that that all probably happened with probably probably four emails max. So yeah, so under space, f- uh, yeah, space appropriately apart because you know when you send the initial email, there's certain people who are just naturally go getters. Yeah, who are like 
you can send the email and then check your website. Hell and, like, yeah, and Christmas. Within a, Let's do yeah, it. and you like have orders coming in yeah. immediately. And then like there's people that are like, yeah, this is so awesome. I want to order that, and they totally forget. So that's why that follow up email like a week later is like really important. And then and then there's like the email a week before Christmas that's like, if you want this before Christmas, order by this date to get them that sort of thing. So so there's a little um, so you had under five emails that you sent out. Yeah. Uh, the first one, you know, um, each uh, did each email have like a link to you go buy the album? Or oh, yeah. Every every single email. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like very clear instructions. I've and also something in an email, like in an email where you're trying to make a sales pitch, I don't include any other information other than like, hey, so, how's it going? Blah uh, blah blah. You know, like I stick to the point. Like I don't say it. And by the way, I hope you can come. By the way, on the side, uh, and this, and make sure you find us on Facebook. Like, no, I don't do any of that stuff. Like, the email is very short and specific and to the point. So it's like people open it. It's not wasting their time. Because trust me, I can get really, really chatty on an email, (laughs) and and I do, Mm -hmm. and I do. But those are non-sales pitch emails. Yeah. Those ones are the relationship building emails where I yeah. can get chatty, and those are the ones that people email me back their stories. Yeah, you know, so it's okay for me to send the like brief to the point sales pitch email because you've put in the, that's yeah. a that's the thing that some people want. Work. Yeah, and I'm not, and it's not people know that every single email they get from me, I'm not always like you should buy this, you should buy this, you should yeah, buy this. yeah, because you, I mean, that just doesn't work. That yeah. pisses people off, it turns them yeah. off, and 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 it it makes it look like oh this person doesn't care because they're that's all they're trying to do but if you pay your dues with uh you know the once a month Mm -hmm. or twice a month email that's part of the relationship building where you tell your story like what you're up Mm -hmm. to elicit responses from your fans and then reply back to them start conversations then when it comes time when you actually are releasing something then it's totally okay to say Okay, I've released this Christmas album. Um, here's what my, you know, I have offered. Check it out. Like, you know, um, you can pick it up uh, before, you know, these special deals. Another thing you were mentioning was scarcity. So you have the first email, mm-hmm. uh, like you're just introducing what the album, what you're offering. And then the second email catches up with those people who maybe didn't open the first one. And then you uh, put in there uh, into that email that this is you know, that these special deals are only going for a limited amount of time, you know, or, you know, this album's only available until this date. I mean, did did that idea of um, providing great value within a short time frame, did that really help with uh, selling the album as well? Yes, it absolutely did because it's like, hey, once December 25th gets here, it's gone, you know, it's, it's not like, and that makes sense logistically too, because it's Christmas, but you could do it even if it wasn't Christmas day. Yeah, no, you you absolutely could. But I mean, okay, so we just released another album an acoustic, it's a 16 track album. Mm -hmm. I've never been more proud of a body of work than this new, than this new album. It's, Again, we listen to the fans. It's 16 songs. Yeah. It's 11 songs of original material and five cover songs that we've been performing live that people have been saying, do you have that recorded? Do you have that recorded? Yeah, yeah. Do you have yeah. that recorded? Well, no, we don't. Well, why not? <laughs> so, yes, well, we listen and we recorded the songs because they haven't recorded yet. And, one of the, and we told people, you know, like one of, the goal, one of the reasons we're doing this is to get airplay on Sirius XM's Coffee House station, mm-hmm. you know? So when the time came again, like we asked fans to call and request. We made, you know, one specific song. Here's the phone number. Yeah. You know, That's only, awesome. Only call if you are a paying Sirius XM subscriber. Don't spam these people. Say, I just heard this song on the station so that they know you're the real deal. Yeah. Would you please play this song by Danica Holmes? Like, that's, um, you know, like, I try not to ask for very much. For oh, did I, uh, I have to interject. Did I say your name wrong? I think yeah. I did. Crap. Why didn't you tell me? Because you said Danica. You know I was like, shit. No, it's okay. I, immediately. I'm sorry. I apologize. I, uh, is- I, had a, I should have probably asked, but I, I get really confident about yeah. my pronunciation because like someone will like put like a french word in front of me and Denica. and i'm not saying i do this all the time but i'm usually able to pronounce it right so yeah. i danica holmes yes 
Sorry. Okay. No, it's Go okay. ahead. Continue. No, it's, no, it's totally <laughs> fine. And, and you said, here's the thing. You said, why didn't you tell me? Because I learned that lesson sort of the hard way, too. I was doing it an on-air radio interview uh -huh. with a DJ. And Danica Holmes, hey. And I, I was like, oh, thanks. It's Danica. And... And there was like I, long I, silence or something. Yeah, it was awkward. I could tell I offended him on accident. I was like, and then the rest of the interview was sort of like mm, awkward. So well, I just, I well, just was he like? I mean, did so. I mean was he just like, hello, welcome to the radio show, and I'm a rope. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's, <laughs> this is more relaxed style than that. So if yeah. like there's if something messes up or you know like someone says, I mean, I don't. I leave that in there because. I mean, this is all about like having real conversations, like know, from yeah. musician to musician, artist to artist. You know, uh -huh. you know, it's it's all it's all good except uh, well, except me screwing up your name. <laughs> well, that's really cool. Well, just one more thing on that. Like, it, it is sort of a, having a weird name. It's like, oh man, do I tell people? Because see, it even got so bad once as like uh, another like I did the, a TV interview uh -huh. and it was on YouTube. And he called me the. He said it the wrong way, you know. And I didn't say anything. And I was playing in a festival like a month later, and they were these people were actually paying for commercials for the festival. Uh -huh. So he went on my YouTube channel to learn how to pronounce my name. And the first clip that he pulled up was the news guy saying it incorrectly. So uh. he didn't double check with me. So then, like, the radio commercial is getting aired online, and I'm getting phone calls from my friends, and they're like, you know, they're totally screwing up your name, so oh. that's when I was, and, and they they felt really bad, like, they paid to, like, remake the whole commercials and everything. We're, we're totally off topic, but, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, maybe there's a, there's a nugget of is wisdom. There, no, is there better? You, you tell me. How do I handle this name situation? I would, I'd be like, I'd be you like. Just interrupt I'd, and be like, yo, that's wrong. I'd be like, hey, 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 hey. It's Kyle. <laughs> Not kale, which uh, I don't know if anybody's ever pronounced my name wrong, but I would do that. Like if there was video, I'd point at point at the, be like, "Hey, listen here, buddy, get okay. my name right. We're gonna Maybe have." I, I just need to get nasty. Yeah, just get nasty. Just get okay. nasty. Be like, "Hey, it's Danica, not Danica. Danica. Okay, did I get yeah. that right, Danica? Okay. Danica, yeah. Sweet. You should like uh, go by the uh, you know have a separate name like a nickname, D Holmes. That way, like, I, you can fix that, and all no, your commercials could A lot be... of people do call me D, so... Oh, sweet, sweet. Okay. So, um, all right, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's jump back on, uh, to track here. I love going off track, but, because <laughs> my mind is a little bit, uh, a little, like, oh, a little yeah, bit of a train that have. derails <laughs> itself. Oh, oh, let's see. Are, aren't we all? Oh, yeah, yeah, you gotta be. You gotta be to, like, you know, survive in this world. So, anyways, uh... Let's talk about um, so you know this Christmas Christmas album uh, email list uh, four emails uh, don't be afraid to actually ask people to pay for your music because you know a lot of musicians are like oh I got selling something so now it's like well you know you're you that's what they want you know these these fans like they wanted you to produce that and they were willing to to pay for it to support you and I think that's I think that's a beautiful thing and that's in the end what a lot of artists who want careers that's what they want they want to create the art but they also want people to support them so i think you hit that the nail on the head with that um now for for specifically like building your email list okay mm -hmm. now we were talking about you know that's that was like your strategy for selling a christmas album that can be applied to selling any kind of album i mean it's not just like if it's christmas season it's a, still the same basic concept for selling mm -hmm. just an album if you put it out in July or whatever, yeah. you know. Um, but how do you uh, how do you build your email list exactly? I mean, are you trying to get fans to go to the homepage of your site, or what does that work? Oh, any way possible. <laughs> but to be specific, um, I have I have two separate websites. Okay. One is DanicaHolmesMusic dot com. Okay. That is, uh, I learned how to do that through John Ojaka, the okay. music marketing manifesto. You said you've you've talked with him before. Yeah, yeah, that, I had him on the show. That's like, it's just one page. It says, who I am, put your info in here. I'm going to email you three free songs. Mm -hmm. And that I use for cold traffic. Like, that's people who are just, you know, 
Um, like I tweet that link every now and then. People who have uh, never met you in person. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, people Simple definition. Never, that, that's, yeah. Yes, that's for people who've never seen a show or anything. Oh, um, now, okay. Now that's one thing. That, uh, my other website is danikaholmes.com and that's the traditional one you know with mm -hmm. videos music tour schedule yeah all that stuff yeah and i have a pitch to sign up for the email list on that website as well um you know i have a light box set up so after you're on the website for five seconds i saw that pop-up box thing pops up and it says i'd like to send you some free music you just need to tell me where to send it ah, i was so, like "Ooh, this is some high level stuff right here <laughs> pop-up box is i mean some people think it's anno uh, annoying but um but it really comes down like if you can see like results from it because uh, i have a i have a pop-up box on my side as as well and yeah that builds wait, a list like big time it. yeah it's like you I, know it, and I test it out. I see what works, and some people will close it out, and that's fine. It doesn't come back after that. I don't do the like that's, try to exit my yes. website, and it's like, you sure you want to leave? It's like, of course yeah, they want. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, know. I'm. Yeah, they're sure they're going to leave. They hit close button or the back button. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that that I will, will not do. But yeah, it definitely, no, I, don't, I don't do that either. And and then there's always the the opt in option on my homepage. You know, so if people mm -hmm. do close out, and they're like, I don't even know who you are, whatever ah who are you to ask me for my information then i oh, you yeah. know but then if they're like you know they've been listening to the music if they're streaming in they watch a couple of videos and then they're like oh i can get that song and then you know they might go back and do it so i have i have two different things going out um the the conversion rate you know of, of visitors to people who actually sign up is so much higher so that conversion than rate music.com Conversion rate for people who don't understand. I'm just going to explain this in every interview that mentions conversion rate because I can't assume that everyone knows or has heard sure. other explanations. But just real quick, guys, conversion rate just means that you, fans go to your website and out of the total number of fans, only a certain number are actually sign up and that ends up being a percentage, good old math. And that percentage is people who uh, convert to be your fans. You know, mm -hmm. they, they get baptized in the waters of your music. <laughs> that's a, that's probably a more of a hardcore description than it yeah. needed but basically yeah yes so the conversion rate on the page that literally only has like no other links nothing it just says like a photo with an, an a, like with a bio and sign up to get free music that conversion rates 20 to 30 percent mm -hmm. at my other my website where that's like well, you know, we could enter it, or I could just see if she's playing near me, or I'm going to watch a video, or, or yeah. I'm going to click on 100 other things because I have so many different options here. So that is not, I mean, that's like under 5%. So that website, that's the one that I always send fans to, though. Those are the people who've seen us, you know, perform live and stuff. So that's, Well, they could be potential to... fans. Like, uh, Well, I mean, you have sure. people that see you live, they become interested and they want to learn more about you because they've heard exactly. the music and then they go to your website and mm -hmm. then they might want to read your bio first. But having that email opt-in focus is mm -hmm. super, super important. And yeah. again, I'm impressed with the pop-up box. That's, that's like super high level. That's, that's my, maybe it's like mega high level, but that's like high level. Well, I, mean. I, yeah, I use a Kudos. Weber. I oh, okay. use Aweber, and I just, it's like a really good system. It was developed for business people. Ex yeah, yeah. It's excellent. developed for the marketing world. Hmm. It's an amazing resource. I've used three different services before that were developed just for musicians and their level of, they, they just, they pale in comparison to an actual. I know exactly who you're talking about, too. So, <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I, there's certain artists that that could work for, like if you just need something really elementary and basic. But if you have a little bit of marketing know-how and are really, or just okay, a willingness okay. to, to, I mean, learn? willingness to learn. I mean, even just yeah. like, even just like, because I use Mailchimp, which is like yeah. AWeb or Mailchimp, yeah. or the two big ones. Yeah. Is mm -hmm. just being able to like have the the metrics there to like see the results is is mm -hmm. enough. You know, that makes a makes a huge difference, but. Um, yeah, Danica, uh, Dan, oh my <gasps> gosh, oh, uh, just punch, just punch oh. me, oh, oh my <laughs> god, <sighs> okay, Danica, oh my, I can't believe I did that again, what a horrible host I am.
I was thinking uh, the same thing. I should, yeah, yeah. I've been at this long enough. I just shouldn't, shouldn't. I should put like, because I, I have, I have like a couple of my questions up here, and I got your name in big bold, big bold letters. <laughs> I should have put like, uh, Danica, and then like you know the whole uh, <laughs> the pronunciation that you do, like yep. D A H dash N E E dash K A H. Yeah. But I, uh, yeah. It's, it's Apolo- t- twice apologies for that but danica thank you for coming on and, and sharing this like your email list wisdom i mean i think that's i'm a big promote uh, proponent of email list to build fans um it really it's it's something that applies to so many different areas you know not just musicians but it's also people who run it, people have any kind of like message or uh any kind of solution to a problem or but in musicians cases it's like you're you're providing this um the you're you're working with people's like emotions and and they're you know building a relationship with them so uh having that email list i mean you're not gonna i mean you could pin a letter and that would be pretty awesome but email is like the next <laughs> best thing to to pinning a letter because i know with um if I built a relationship with someone, I could have a cluttered email inbox. But if I see their name, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I'll, yes. you know, I'm going to skip over whatever crap is in my email box, and then I'll open theirs, you know, and yeah. I'll and I'll read through it. So, again, Danica, thanks for coming on yeah. the Season Music Web Show. Do you, do you have like another thirty seconds for like two more? No, things? no. I'm a my timer is twenty nine twenty four. You better get started, man. Okay. I, I'm like. So I'm gonna talk fast. Let's okay. Go. The the last two things I was gonna say is one thing that I do is I sign up for other artists' emails. Um, ah. Major label artists, huge artists, to any artists that any artist that I go to their show and they've taken the time to put in a clipboard email sign up. I will mm-hmm. always sign up for the email as a respect to that artist because um, they're doing it. They're doing it the way they should be. Like they're yeah. making an effort, and and especially like from the stage. Um, oh, well, about sending up for other artists' emails, mm-hmm. I I do that because I learn from them. Mm-hmm. You know, some artists have the best emails ever, and then other yeah. artists I sign up on their list, and I forgot I even signed up for their list because I get my first email six months later, and it's like. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. you haven't heard from me in a while. I've been, I've been busy. doing yeah. stuff, so and uh, I had to put a yes. plug a hole it's in my like wall and uh, my garden. Yeah. Yes, it's like I don't. I, I'm sorry. Like you lost me as a fan. Like I don't even remember seeing your show. But you know, like what what I do, like at shows, we have our, our clipboard set out, and we have a. I haven't like people can sign up directly from my phone and my iPad too. Like I have good because I made so a video just... about how that's oh, awesome okay. way to do it. Yes, so they can just do you know name, first name, email, zip, and they immediately get sent three free songs. So mm-hmm. if they're at a show and they sign up, uh, they can have their three free songs like before I'm done with mm-hmm. the song that I'm singing on stage. Like it's just like a really fast process, and that yeah. puts them into uh, an auto responder series, mm-hmm. uh, and that's like a whole nother story. Mm-hmm. But um. When I'm playing shows, like I always joke, like if I play a show and I get zero email signups, did the show really happen? It did it. Oh, well, like if a tree falls in the woods, yes. Or here. Yeah, it's like like that's how important getting people's emails are, especially mm-hmm. when I'm in new markets. Yeah, like it it is absolutely huge. Yeah, and it doesn't, and and I don't see how it would detract because it's so it's such like a simple thing that takes so little time i can't i couldn't see how i could possibly i I don't see how that detracts from the experience of the music because like you know once the show's in and you've done your encore and people are psyched up you just say Mm -hmm. like if you want like to get this song you just heard or whatever you know you could start with a popular song or you could do use fan experiences which is something i'm going to be talking about more in the future as an incentive mm-hmm. for them to sign up, then, you know, that just takes two seconds of you on the mic or whatever, yeah, or it does. you get behind the merch table and then having the, the clipboard there, which every artist should be getting behind the merch table as much as possible so they can yep. talk to people. Uh, but 
I mean, that's that's just extremely important, and it doesn't it doesn't like mar the experience, in my opinion. I've seen a lot of great shows where they didn't do that, and even if they did do that, it would have still been an amazing show. Mm-hmm. So yeah. would have I would have enjoyed myself no less because yeah, I. I'll actually send clipboards through the audience. Like I'll be like, "Hey, I have a clipboard right here. If you're interested, we're we're gonna send you some. You know, do you dive songs. into the crowd with it with your in your hand? You're like, yeah. <laughs> you should you should see it. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, because I also found like people like they don't like to stand like eh. they don't like to like get up and like walk over to the merch table. Like mm. people are generally lazy, so like mm. the easier you make it on them, like the clipboard is coming to you. It's very plus you put a little don't... pressure on them. Yes, Say, hey, buddy, right. put your armor on the show. And be like, yeah. and you like see, song? <laughs> they see other they see other people signing up, so they're like, this must be okay. And I always start my yeah. my. I always, I never start up with a blank clipboard. I always have like at least six names on there. Ten's good. Like that is a whole very page smart. Is good because it's it's social proof. It's like oh, though all those other people signed up, it must be okay. But like nobody wants to be the first on a blank piece of paper. It's like this person has no fans. Why would I do this? There's you know so like little things like that make a huge difference. Like send it through the audience. You will get. You know, like the last time I sent it through the audience, we probably got fifty signups. If I would have kept it at the front that's awesome that's if awesome I, if i would have kept it at the front it would have been like the five you know maybe five people who i would have been like hey why don't you sign up here so anyway I, yeah. i'm going off but like it's i can't stress how important the email list is all right it's like, guys it's my direct lifeline to the fans all right guys rec- anyone listening to that needs to recognize that 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 bit of wisdom there because i wholeheartedly agree and i'm so sad that some of my favorite artists that i've seen who didn't have ma- who don't have major re- record label deals by the way uh didn't really take advantage of that and if they did man it would be the bomb diggity i would be reading those emails and if they were had some kind of anything going on special offers or whatever i'd, I'd jump on it for sure so uh danica that's some yeah. awesome wisdom there i'm gonna have to cut it off here uh, just to keep things short and respect everybody's time but thanks again I will. Uh, yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Sweet. Hopefully, be hearing uh, more from you. Uh, when's your actually? Tell us when your uh, is your next album coming out, or did you already put it out? It's out. It's out. What's it called? Where can we get it? It is out. Yep. It's an acoustic album called Balance, and you can get it. See how I'm going to do this? Mm-hmm. You can get three free songs at. <laughs> Danica Holmes, Danica music, Holmes music dot com. Dot com. All right. The... We'll have that linked up below to make it easy because <laughs> all you people are lazy. Just kidding. We all love you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Check you later. And that wraps up this week's episode of Seeds and Music on the show. Today we had Danica Holmes, full time independent artist making 100% of her income from music, talking about why the email list is her number one music career tool. So show your support for her by heading over to her website. We got it linked up below and signing up for her email list. Not only will you show support for her, but you'll also learn a little bit about how she actually does it. How does she build fan relationships on her email list? And how exactly does she sell music? I mean, doing a little reconnaissance is really, really going to help you out. So make sure you do that. And next, uh, if you haven't signed up for our email newsletter at Seeds of Music, go ahead and do that. You can head over to seedsofmusic.net, punch in your email address, and you'll get updates on new interviews, vlog episodes, articles, plus special newsletter content to help you build a bigger fan base and sell more music online. And once again, we do have the iTunes podcast. Make sure to subscribe to that, leave a rating and review. And if you liked this interview, you also share it on facebook and tweet it out on twitter to everyone you know and lastly uh, we have a comment box linked up uh, below on this page you might be on the youtube page they got the comment box there uh, just leave a comment i'd love to hear what your thoughts are and if you know someone who would should be on this show you can also leave that in the comments as well but if that person is you uh just send me an email i've got an open door email policy kyle.seedsmusic at gmail.com just send me an email at the most and it'll take one or two days to get back to you but I always answer every email that comes my way and remember we are the future of music music